Good day and welcome to Daily Prayer from Mount Pleasant Baptist Church. My name is the Reverend Paul Lavender. It's Friday the 4th of December. I trust that you're well wherever you are and that you're aware of the Lord's love for you and his presence with you today. Let's bow our heads, shall we, as we just centre ourselves on remembering that we are loved by the Lord. So let's keep a moment quiet. Psalm 59 Deliver me from my enemies, O my God. Protect me from those who rise up against me. Deliver me from those who work evil. From the bloodthirsty, save me. Even now they lie in wait for my life. The mighty stir up strife against me. For no transgression or sin of mine, O Lord, for no fault of mine, they run and make ready. Rouse yourself. Come to my help and see. You, Lord God of hosts and God of Israel, awake to punish all the nations. Spare none of those who treacherously plot evil. Each evening they come back, howling like dogs and prowling about the city. There they are, bellowing with their mouths, with sharp words on their lips, for who, they think, will hear us. But you laugh at them, O Lord. You hold all the nations in derision. O my strength, I will watch for you. For you, O God, are my fortress. My God, in his steadfast love, will meet me. My God will let me look in triumph on my enemies. Do not kill them, or my people may forget. Make them totter by your power, and bring them down, O Lord, our shield. For the sin of their mouths, the words of their lips, let them be trapped in their pride. For the cursing and lies that they utter, consume them in wrath. Consume them until they are no more. Then it will be known to the ends of the earth that God rules over Jacob. Each evening they come back, howling like dogs and prowling about the city. They roam about for food and growl if they do not get their fill. But I will sing of your might. I will sing aloud of your steadfast love in the morning, for you have been a fortress for me and a refuge in the day of my distress. O oh, my strength, I will sing praises to you. For you, O God, are my fortress, the God who shows me steadfast love. We thank God for his words to us today. And now let's come together as we pray. Let's pray together. Lord God, source and giver of all good things, we thank you for all your mercies and for your loving care over all creation. We bless you for the gift of life. For your protection around us, your guiding hand upon us, your steadfast love within us. We thank you for friendship and duty, for good hopes and precious memories, for joys that cheer us and trials that teach us to trust in you. Most of all, we thank you for the saving knowledge of your Son, our Saviour, for the living presence of your Spirit, the Comforter, for the Church, the Body of Christ, for the ministry of word and sacrament, and all the means of grace. In all these things, make us wise in the right use of your blessings, that we may give you an acceptable thanksgiving all the days of our life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God of mercy and truth, we seek your forgiveness for the sinful way we live. We are unworthy to be your children, unfit to be your servants. We are burdened with memories of things undone that ought to have been done, and of things done that ought not to have been done. Bring us afresh the healing and cleansing power of your Spirit, that we may lay hold of the salvation you offer and walk in newness of life, to the glory and praise of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. May Almighty God forgive us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Give us time to amend our lives and bring us the grace and the comfort of the Holy Spirit through Christ our Lord. Amen. We read from Isaiah chapter 11 today, beginning to read at the 10th verse. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. 
The nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. On that day the Lord will extend his hand yet a second time to recover the remnant that is left of his people, from Assyria, from Egypt, from Pathros, from Ethiopia, from Elam, from Shinar, from Hamath, and from the coastlands of the sea. He will raise a signal for the nations, and will assemble the outcasts of Israel, and gather the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. The jealousy of Ephraim shall depart, the hostility of Judah shall be cut off, Ephraim shall not be jealous of Judah, and Judah shall not be hostile towards Ephraim. But they shall swoop down on the backs of the Philistines in the west. Together they shall plunder the people of the east. They shall put forth their hand against Edom and Moab, and the Ammonites shall obey them. And the Lord will utterly destroy the tongue of the sea of Egypt, and will wave his hand over the river with his scorching wind, and will split it into seven channels, and will make a way to cross on foot. So there shall be a highway from Assyria for the remnant that is left of his people, as there was for Israel when they came up from the land of Egypt. Thanks be to God for his word. I want to uh, tell you a little bit about uh, my love of racket sports. And when I was uh, a young man and into my late 20s, early 30s, I still used to enjoy playing squash and badminton. And I was quite good at them both, particularly badminton. People used to say, oh, they thought squash was much harder game. And because uh, it seemed to be that people would, or seemed to other people they'd watch you play and would think that because you were hitting something very hard against the wall, there was more physical exertion. But I explained to somebody one day that the main difference between squash and badminton is that in badminton, you've only got one chance when the ball, when the shuttlecock comes over the net. Because once the shuttlecock has hit the floor, that's it. But in squash, the ball, until, until it bounces a second time, you've got a number of options. You can boost it against the wall. You can hit it against the back wall and try and get it forward. You can do all sorts of weird and wonderful things with it. That's the difference. In badminton, you've got one opportunity. And as soon as the shuttlecock hits the floor, end of point. In our reading today, I'm so glad that the Lord appears to be saying to his people, look, I'm not just going to extend my hand one time to you. It's not a case of one, one chance and you're out. He's going to extend his hand a second time to recover the remnant that is left of his people. It's not one strike and you're out. How many times have we decided that we're going to chart a new direction or plot a new course in our life only to fall foul of old failings? The sting of old regrets comes back to haunt us and we feel like, well, if God did give us one strike and we're out, we'd be sunk already. But you know what? With God, there's always a fresh, of opp fresh opportunity. And if we're prepared to turn away from what we know to be wrong, and even if we get things wrong again, by his grace, he can strengthen us. And so you may have weakness. You may have tendencies in your life. Never feel that God will give up on you. Open your heart afresh to him this Advent time. And remember that he, just as he did with his people in the past, will keep on loving them as long as they are seeking to trust him and take hold of him. The Lord knows our weakness. He knows we're not perfect. He loves us just the same. But as long as we are prepared to trust him and to obey him and to keep on going, then with God, failure is never final. Let's confess our faith together. We'll use the words of the Apostles' Creed to strengthen and help us. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church. 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now let's bring our prayers to the Lord, our concern for others and for ourselves and for our world. Let's pray together. We continue to pray for racial harmony, both in our country and throughout the world. God and Father of all, in your love you made all the nations of the world to be a family, and your Son taught us to love one another. Yet our world is riven apart with prejudice, arrogance and pride. Help the different races and nations of the world to love and understand one another better. Increase among us sympathy, tolerance and goodwill, that we may learn to appreciate the gifts that others bring to us, and to see in all people our brothers and sisters for whom Christ died. Save us from jealousy, hatred and fear, and help us to live together as members of one family at home in the world, sons and daughters of one Father, who live in the glorious liberty of the children of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Today we want to pray for Sri Lanka. We were going to pray to today especially for those who continue to bring hope to children who have eyesight problems but there's been a, a cyclone and a hurricane that's that's made land on the on Sri Lanka's island and so I want to pray uh, for relief efforts and pray for those whose lives have been affected particularly around coastal regions and pray that there may be sufficient resources to help all those whose lives have been devastated. And we do pray for work in Sri Lanka with children, uh, particularly those who have eyesight difficulties, and the doctors and nurses and opticians and ophthalmologists will be able, particularly those who are Christian, to bring hope to many children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Then as we pray for the work of BMS World Mission, we pray for Susanna Burrell in Mozambique, running sewing groups with women to help them to learn vital skills. And also to help them to know their value in the Lord. We pray, Father, uh, that through this affirmation of women, family life may be strengthened and the love of the Lord better known. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So let's pray for ourselves and for any we know and love in need today, in a moment of quiet. And as I'm always glad to receive requests for intercessory prayer to be made for many people, but not always able to give names, I want to thank God for answered prayer in the past, but also to pray for those today who are suffering from COVID, those recently admitted to hospital, and those who are suffering from mental illness at, the at this moment, that they would all receive the care and attention they need, thanking God for the care and diligence of doctors and nurses and all medical staff who will attend to people that we know. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Keep hold of what is good. Avoid all forms of evil. And may God himself, the God of peace, make you holy through and through and keep you sound in spirit, soul and body, free of any fault when our Lord Jesus Christ appears. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you, with those whom you love and with God's people everywhere today and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for joining me today. A reminder to keep your eyes peeled for extra resources that will appear both on YouTube, on Instagram television, 
uh, and Facebook throughout the day. But until we meet again tomorrow for prayer, goodbye and God bless.